Hey guys, there's a lot going on right now in the world of tech. So I thought I'd make a Snapchat update video on the huge update today and an LG G6 just leaked the official images. And then I wanted to talk to you guys about some personal stuff, but then I'm like, let's just throw it all into one video. So this is basically the news video that I make for everything right now. I wanted to start off with the LG G6. So the G6 just leaked. The 100% real design is here. And I gotta say it is a stunner. The Verge has shown a leaked image of the G6, as well as some additional details on release date and actual specs. So this thing is stunning. It looks like to me what an iPhone 8 would look like if it was in a throwback to an iPhone 4 and 4S with the steel border and the glass front and back. It looks fantastic. There are almost no bezels on the top and the sides, which is a trend I am loving. I mean, like every phone in 2017 is going to be doing some variant of this, and I think it's great. Some trends are amazing and they should stay. So The Verge also gave some details. They said that it's possible a Snapdragon 835 could be implemented in this phone, possibly the first phone on the market in 2017 to do so, but because it is releasing so soon, they might not meet the uh, scheduling with Qualcomm to include this chip, so it's unknown 100% right now. But it is expected to release on February 26th at the Mobile World Conference. I gotta say, the most impressive thing about this phone is the 18-9 aspect ratio display. Because they eliminated those bezels, they can actually make uh, the screen a little bit longer, throw some more pixels in there, and then new aspect ratio. Either way, I am excited for it, much more than I was for the G5, so we'll have to see how it's like uh, when it releases. And a Snapchat update has been released. This is actually, interestingly enough, the first time Snapchat has has ever been above the 9.x version number. It's now at 10.0.0.0. So brand new version number and brand new look for Snapchat. So once you jump inside, you get a more rounded uh, look. It's a little bit easier to navigate. So Snapchat's reasoning was like old people can't keep up with all these young kids that know the secrets of Snapchat. And Snapchat was becoming so complex with the features. Like it was just not very easy to navigate. Now they've made it a little bit easier. They added a search function up here on the very front page, which I do not like. I don't want a search bar in my main feed right here, but you could actually get into your most recents from here, groups, uh, even contacts, so that's okay, I guess. But it does have a much, much more rounded look to it, which is more aesthetically pleasing. You can search through the actual discovery feed as well. There's a lot of changes in here, uh, mostly aesthetic and navigational, no new features wise. I was actually kind of curious, uh, does the hack work for saving snaps? And I'm gonna go ahead and check that real quick. So basically you receive a snap once you receive it and it's loaded, just jump into airplane mode, go ahead and look at that snap, take a screenshot if necessary and uh, go ahead and hold the power button from here. Basically, for those of you that don't know how to do it, and then just hold the home button until it flashes and force quits Snapchat. Okay, super simple. Now re-enable airplane mode. And if this worked correctly, you should still see the snap in here, which it did. So uh, I didn't get a notification on this guy, which means the Snapchat hack is still working on the latest version of iOS 10. If you guys are jailbroken, Phantom Light is not working at the moment, so take caution, don't update yet. Uh, but there is a new version of Snapchat, looks quite nice. So after studying 200,000 phones and 30,000 batteries individually, Samsung is finally giving us a conclusive result as to why the batteries are exploding. And basically, there were two reasons, two manufacturers with two completely separate reasons. So the first one was basically the battery insulation, the heat shielding was too thin. Samsung wanted to make such a compact, thin phone, and that put limitations on what kind of battery could fit inside of it. So instead of actually limiting how much uh, milliamps the battery size would be, they limited the shielding on the outside of it, which is a big no-no. That caused uh, the electrodes to crimp inside and making connection and short circuiting, thus starting a fire, which is really bad. That's what caused the first wave of explosions. Next, a lot of people received the replacement Note 7s, which actually had a very similar issue. Uh, some of them were missing some heat shielding tape inside the battery. As a result, there were sharp protrusions inside the battery, catch fire, and same problem again. So, you know, Samsung gave up at that point. They refunded everyone. I got my money back. And the study basically shows that you do not want to limit your battery protection. And they're actually willing to push back the Samsung Galaxy S8 release date just to ensure that the batteries are safe. They're gonna be doing a lot of studies, a lot of testing. So we might even see a little bit of a later release date, but the Galaxy S8 will at least not explode. And while we're still on the topic of Samsung, I wanted to show you something that blew me away. So this is the Samsung Galaxy S i9000. This is the first Galaxy phone uh, before the S2 and so on. So someone actually managed to get a running version of Android 7.1.1 
on it and it actually doesn't run too bad. It's a little laggy in some areas, smooth in others, but overall it seems to work. Would you want to use this as a daily driver? Probably not. It's more of a concept, but wow. Imagine running iOS 10.2.1 on the very first iPhone. That is just crazy. I know White Door exists, which basically makes a skinned version of iOS newer versions on older phones, but you know, it's not the same thing. This is actually running the newest version of Android on an old ass Android phone. So got to give props to the developers that made that happen. But I mean, I want to see more of this kind of stuff. It impresses me. Oh, Russia, the stories you have to tell. So I wanted to share something funny over from my Western friends in Russia. One guy actually had a phone that he was using above an ice fishing hole on a lake. So he dropped that iPhone in there. It was an iPhone 7, so it is waterproof, you know? And it surprised me how capable this thing was even in four degrees Celsius water. So after 13 hours in that hole, uh, his friend managed to retrieve the phone from underwater and hand it back to him still working. It dropped like 15, 16% in charge during that time, 13 hours, but it still worked. And it didn't even seem too deep, but that's not the point. The iPhone isn't rated for waterproofing yet. It still amazes me how capable it is as a water resistant phone. So the iPhone 8, which is said to be even more resistant at IP68 rating will do even better. I can't wait for it, but you know, stories like this always pop up. It always does impress me. So we know that Apple is working on iOS 10.3. It's been said that it might come with a night or dark mode. Hopefully we'll see a beta one here soon. It was supposed to be here already. I don't know where it is, but alongside this dark or night mode, we might be seeing even more emojis, more specifically redhead emojis. So there's been a lot of unhappiness in the news. Even petitions started about Apple's severe lack of redheaded emojis on their iPhone platform. I mean, people argue about literally anything nowadays. Doesn't matter to me, but then again, I'm not a redhead. I'm sure I'd be like wondering where they are, but not specifically unhappy. Anyways, Apple may have noticed this as they are scheduling a Unicode committee technical meeting next week that might even focus on redheaded emojis coming to iOS very soon. Either way, kind of cool. The more diversity, the better. Apple and lawsuits, they seem to be happening all the time, either towards Apple or from Apple. So Apple has actually sued Qualcomm for $1 billion. Now Qualcomm produces half of its modems for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. The other half is made by Intel. Now what Apple is saying is that Qualcomm is overcharging and they haven't provided the promised $1 billion in rebates uh, for purchases Apple has made with them. So they go all out and announce war with a lawsuit. Now, despite this lawsuit, they're still gonna continue to do business on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus, so don't worry about any shortages or anything like that. So hopefully this could mean somewhat cheaper or iPhones in the future that don't go up in price uh, thanks to this lawsuit if they do happen to win. And the very last thing I wanted to mention, which is a little bit sad, it makes me a little sentimental, the iPhone 2G is officially dead. Now I know it's been dead since 2008, but AT&T has officially shut down the 2G Edge network that it runs on. So if you manage to get a SIM card inside of one, you will no longer be able to actually use it on a network with AT&T. So that is a little bit sad, but as of January 1st, uh, AT&T said it was discontinued for like two weeks before they announced it and no one has complained. So I'm assuming nobody is still using that phone on the network. If they are, they got upgrade to the iPhone 3G at least now. Funny thing is the unexpected side effect of them discontinuing that is in San Francisco, a bus and train uh, were using this network to communicate and it caused a little bit of chaos in the city because of that, because it just stopped working. Kind of funny. But uh, yeah, the iPhone 2G is officially dead. There's no support from it from Apple or AT&T now. And a couple little updates about me personally. So in my last update video, I mentioned how I got scammed for a very large sum over the sealed iPhone 2G. I did send it back. I got in contact with eBay. I think with fingers crossed right now that everything will be okay. So they said, send it back. It depends on what he says. If I'll get my money back, if I didn't open it, uh, but I've got the evidence, so I'm not too worried about it. So I should be okay there. Thanks to everyone that gave their support for me. Um, no thanks to everyone that said I'm a dumbass because I bought a $5,000 phone. I mean, I don't go and judge people for paying like a million, $2 million for a piece of art just because I don't like it. It's a collector's item. Uh, it's something that is said to be appreciating in value. The iPhone has just reached 10 years uh, in age. Uh, Steve Jobs, the person that made it, was his first successful iPhone. It was an iPhone that shaped everything. I mean, most phones nowadays are mimicking some of the technology from it. It's very iconic. And as a result, it's worth a lot of money in brand new sealed condition. Will I buy another one? Absolutely. I'm, I'll be looking for one for a pretty decent deal. 
I don't want to overpay just because of how rare it is, but I still want to get one and hold on to it. So uh, yeah, thanks to all the supporters. Anyways, the last thing is my channel logo. It has been five years since I've got my current one made by a fan and still there. I just never really cared. A lot of people have been complaining, so it is going to be changed. I'm getting a new one. Uh, and I actually have several that I wanted to ask you, which one do you like? Because right now I'm in a stage where I can still change it, edit it, and uh, have it be okay under the contract with the company I hired. Um, I don't know. I, I seem to like some of them. Some of them seem a little bit lazy to me. Personally, I like this one the most and I'm probably gonna be sticking with this one. So if you have any changes you'd like me to add to it, I want it to be okay with you guys. So let me know down below. All right, guys, that's it for the update today. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the next one. Peace.